Salome is here with Holy Language Institute at holylanguage.com and welcome to this little five-part tutorial course on how to use eSword, which is, in my opinion, the best Bible software out there. But don't take my word for it. Let me tell you five reasons right now why I believe that it's the best Bible software. After that, I'm going to tell you about each of these five little tutorials and what you'll be learning. And then in this one, we're going to talk about how to download and install eSword. And I'm going to give you 10 tips for tweaking the settings to make it look really nice and really usable. And uh, I'm going to share with you some little surprises along the way about a biblical animal. And no, it's not the cat. So, um, if you've ever celebrated Passover before, you're probably familiar with the question, why is this night different than all other nights? Well, the question here is, why is this Bible software different than all Bible softwares? And uh, the five reasons that I personally love eSword and uh, recommend it is that, firstly, it's free. Now, some of my family background is Scottish, and some of my family background is Jewish, and on both sides, I am a conservative spender, and so I... I really like free. And uh, not to mention, this can be helpful depending on your budget or where you are in the world. And um, just because it's free doesn't mean it's low quality software either, as you're about to see. Second reason I love eSword is because it's simple, it's easy to use, and it's relatively um, user friendly and uh, intuitive in terms of its layout. And it's going to be especially easy for you to use as you track with me going through these five little tutorial videos. Thirdly, I love eSword and recommend it because it's bursting with Bible versions and translations, with dictionaries and concordance, concordances, and uh, you can say concordance if you want, but that's not actually how to say it, although I have heard people say that. Concordances and uh, various other resources like Bible commentaries. Uh, fourthly, eSword is wildly popular and very widely used which means that it's trusted, which means it's not going anywhere for a long time. Um, there was some very popular um, Bible software called BibleWorks, which unfortunately at the time of this filming went defunct last year. It was a shock to a lot of people and uh, for many Bible scholars and, and pastors that left them scrambling. Um, eSword isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, it's, it's very popular and um, it's also, it's out there. Uh, and then fifthly, eSword is great because you can get it for almost any device. So if you're using a, you know, a PC or a Mac or you, know, you, you want to get it on your iPhone or something, it is available. So in these five tutorials, I'm going to be showing you this software and how to use it. In the first one, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about downloading, installing, and then tweaking the settings. In the second tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to use eSword to read the Bible. That includes navigating to passages, you know, chapter and verse, uh, bookmarking passages you want to come back to, searching for specific words and phrases, and then finally copying verses so that you can paste them into other documents and whatnot. In the third tutorial, I'm going to talk with you about how to compare different translations, install and uh, load your favorite Bible versions, um, and then also use uh, interlinear and parallel functions. And I'm also going to give you an overview of my favorite Bible translations and versions, and also some original Hebrew and Greek texts that you can get. Uh, I've been a um, a biblical Hebrew uh, teacher for many years, and uh, I have also uh, led congregation in the past, so I, um, I have some good recommendations for you there. Uh, fourthly, I'm going to show you in this for the fourth tutorial how to study original words, um, how to use the Bible dictionary feature to look up uh, Hebrew and uh, Greek words, um, how to look them up in the original languages, also how to look up Greek words in both the, uh, the New Testament and also in the Septuagint, which can be a handy little feature. And then in the fifth tutorial, um, I'm going to show you how to read various commentaries and uh, search them. I'm going to give you my recommendations for commentaries, especially ones coming from a perspective that um, helps you to understand the original Hebrew Jewish context of the Bible, including the New Testament, and also going to show you some great reference works that you can use in Esword, for instance, Josephus, uh, the, uh, the Church Fathers, and one of my favorites, maps. I don't know if you've ever heard someone refer to the whole Bible from Genesis to maps before. Usually, of course, we'd say Genesis to Revelation, but if you actually look at the back of the Bible, there are also maps in the back. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this little course. 
In this first one, let's look now at how to download eSword and install it. So, I'm, I did you a favor. I compiled a zipped folder uh, with the install files for eSword, if you uh, have a, a Windows PC, and then also um, an instructional document from yours truly, and uh, also my own favorite um, Bible versions and uh, dictionaries and commentaries that you would normally have to search and then install. So if you download this zip folder, you get it all. Basically, all you need to do that is look underneath this video, regardless of whether you're watching it right on YouTube or you're watching it on our website at holylanguage.com, you should see a download link underneath the video. And if it's not on YouTube, then check on our website. You will get some special perks if you watch these videos at holylanguage.com instead of just watching it on YouTube as much as I love YouTube. So basically, that's all you need to do to download this and get it get started. Of course, you can also download it from the official eSword website, and I'm sure you know how to Google to find that. So I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Um, you do check out the website at some point. It has some other handy pages, some nice little instructionals and demos, and then it also has a, a page telling the story of eSword, the original Bible software. So you may find that interesting. You can also get eSword for your Mac um, from the Apple Store. There is a small one-time fee for it if you want to get it there. And you can also get eSword LT for your iPhone. And we're actually going to be talking about using eSword on your phone in a different tutorial. So that, that'll technically that'll be a sixth standalone tutorial. And again, you can find that on our website at holylanguage.com. So that's all I have to tell you about how to download and install eSword. When you have done that, you are going to see this. This is how it comes fresh out of the box, so to speak, except for one little difference. <laughs> I uh, actually went into the tip of the day file and I hacked it. This is not one of the original tips that come with eSword, but it is true that most of the tips you'd normally see here will be covered by me, Izzy, in this tutorial series. And I do have other series at holylanguage.com that I really am sure you would enjoy. So. This is what you're going to see when you first open eSword. Um, you may want to hit next tip, next tip, and read some of the tips. It could go hand in hand nice, nicely with this tutorial. Um, if you want to keep seeing tips, then leave that checked. We're going to leave it checked because there's another way of turning off this feature later, and I want to show that to you. So we're going to say, OK, let's click that little OK button now. And here we are. Now, as you can see here, there are five windows there is the actual text of scripture under Bibles. There are uh, Bible books over here on the side that you can use to navigate to specific uh, Bible books and chapters. There is a dictionary window, commentaries, and then also editors. Personally, I don't use editors at all. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial series that's beyond the scope of our focus here. Yeah, so basically, we're not going to cover all of this in this tutorial. I already shared with you how, for instance, in the last tutorial, we'll talk about commentaries. And uh, then, uh, you know, in, in other tutorials, we'll talk about how to use this to compare different Bible translations or how to look up original words in the dictionaries. But for now, this is what you're going to get when you open it up. Now, something nice about eSword is that you can you can rearrange these windows depending on what you're wanting to do and how you're wanting to do them. Let me show you how to do that. Now, when we start clicking, you can see right here, you see this little uh, little tack button? I guess you could call it a pin or a thumbtack. So that's pinning that there. If we click on that, it's going to automatically recede to the side. And the first one that you click is going to stay at the top. Now, so I'm going to do this the way I would normally do it. I'm going to show you how to make all of these recede except for the Bible one so that you can just have a nice big Bible text to read. So we're going to begin with with uh, Bible books. You know what? Mm, that's a tough one. Um, some people like to have the Bible books thing open on the side, but you know what? I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to close it up for now. All right. We're going to I'm going to show you in a later tutorial how to use this uh, navigatory feature. But for now, we're going to close that up and you can see that it closed up onto the sidebar. Now, look what happens if we mouse over it. It opens up again. And what happens when we take it away? Oh, 
it's going to disappear again. So, you know, if you have a child, you may want to play a little peekaboo just right here. Peekaboo! <laughs> or if you have an inner child, you might want to play this a little bit yourself with these windows. Okay, so let's go on in order. I would, I would probably put the dictionaries window next. So let's auto hide that. Then I would close up the commentaries window. So let's go ahead and auto hide that. And then finally, I would put editors at the bottom because as I said, that's not actually something that I really use. And uh, there we go. So let's go ahead now and um, look a little bit farther, a little bit more at this. Now, as you can see here, all of these windows automatically receded to the left hand side. There are ways of moving them around and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's say that you're reading the text but then you would also like to read the commentary. So let's go over here to commentaries. We're going to go click and we're going to pin it. All right. So as you can see here, you can now you can now have the commentary and the uh, and the text side by side like yay. There are other ways you can organize these. Let's say that you don't like the squishy text over here. It's just a little bit too squishy for you. This is a wonderful little secret. You're going to put your arrow over top of the, uh, the, the bar of the window, click, hold down, and then move it while you're still holding it down. And did you see what just happened? There are these little, n these little navigation arrows that opened up. Now, I moved my arrow over here, and as you can see, it's going to show you in that shadow where where the window is going to move to. So let's let go and see what happens. Boom. Okay, and it automatically moved the commentaries to the, the bottom. Let's say that you would like to see more of the Bible text. You're going to arrow down here to the middle, and you should be able to click on that and make one smaller. Okay, there it is. See that? So I'm going to click on there and drag this down. And now, as you can see, I, uh, I can read the Bible here. And then I can also see the commentary here. So, you know, you may want to do it this way. You may not. It's up to you. I'm going to show you another feature. Let's say that you don't want all of these tabs on the left-hand side. Let's say you want them on the right-hand side. That is very doable also. So let's take this commentaries tab. Let's do the exact same thing. We're going to hold it down. We're going to move the arrow. Okay. Now, did you see something? Do you see something here? There are two sets of navigatory tabs. There's this one up here and that would move the commentaries box to the top or there's also this one. See this one and that's going to move it over to the right hand side. So let's do that and now let's see here we're gonna um, now the same thing here um, I showed you how you can you can move the boxes up and down to adjust them you can also move them side to a side to adjust them. Now let's click this and make it small and there we go. Now, did you notice where it went? We moved it up to the top. Now, you might not want it that way, uh, but maybe you do. So it really depends on, on on how you want it. So you know, if you want your so again, let's uh, let's say you don't want it on the to disappear to the top there to recede to the top, however you want to say that. So let's go ahead and uh, once again, we're just going to put our arrow on the top of this box, and it should give us a navigation a navigation option. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to. We're going to have to. See this little little pin here? We're going to have to pin that. And now that it's pinned, we can uh, we can go ahead and, 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 and move it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so that gives us the option there. Oh, you know what? The option I want is hiding behind me. So let's move me over a little bit. And then let's go ahead and move this to the right. All right, so when we put it here, and then we go ahead and we we hide it. Okay, there. Can you see that? That's what I wanted to show you. So now the commentaries box is on the right hand side. And uh, if you wanted, you could do the same thing with all of these Bible books, dictionaries, editors. You could take them all and you can move them all, you know, to the top or to the bottom or to the right hand side. It really is up to you. So I am going to let's go ahead now and move commentaries back over to the left hand si side just so you can see how that's done. So we're going to open commentaries up. We're going to pin it right there. We're going to click on top of it and then we're going to drag it over there to the left. And then we are going to make it 
make it disappear. Boom. And did you see where it receded to? It went back over here to the left-hand side. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too, uh, hopefully that didn't give you seasickness or some form of nausea. Um, and you know what? It's kind of annoying how it's so, it's receded. It's, it's, it's appearing very big there, but of course you can, you know, you can change that. So anyways, um, that's how to, that's an overview of the, the windows or boxes in eSword and how to rearrange them. Now I'm going to show you a couple of my personal preferences when it comes to other tips here, other features. So let's go up to the top here and do you see this little options box? We're going to click on that and then we are going to, uh, I'd mentioned the, uh, the, the, okay, here we are. So we have some different options here. Some of these are great and they're handy and then some of them aren't so handy. Um, so let's let's go ahead and uh, I'm, I, there were those tool tips at the beginning. I'm trying to identify which of those that is actually. It's not strong, so don't do that one. I think it's this one. So let's unclick that and I think that means it won't show you tool tips at the beginning anymore. All right. So I personally like to turn off that one. I'm going to show you another one here. It's called Bible Periscope. Basically, the Bible Periscope feature means it shows you these headings before each section. Now, these headings, of course, were not in the original texts of Scripture. Um, the, the translators added them later um, to make it easier for people to get around, which, interestingly enough, is also true of uh, verses. The, originally, the Bible was not divided up into uh, chapters and verses the way it is now. Um, that also was a later edition. So, you know, some people really like these, uh, these headers, and then some people really don't like them. Um, in some ways, I, I, I'm a bit of an extremist sometimes, and I can also have a, a purist side. So in my teens, I really wanted a Bible that just had the text. I was like, I don't want a Bible with all of those headers in it that somebody made up and everything else. I just want the text. And so I'm going to actually show you the, the, uh, the Bible that I used in my teens. Now, I didn't put this purple duct tape on it that came at a later date. Someone else put that on it. Um, originally, actually, I had gray duct tape on mine because that's just significantly more masculine than purple duct tape. But I will go ahead and I'll show you a, a page from this. And oh, you might you might enjoy this bookmark too. Um, my daughter wrote me a little note. She calls me Abba. Um, we're Jewish, and um, you know, we uh, we you know we, we, we read scripture in, in Hebrew, so she calls me Abba because that's Hebrew for dad, of course. Anyways, oh, this is really quite sweet too on the back. It says, I love Abba. Anyways, so let me show you what I did. Uh, um, okay, can you see those black marks, those scribbles up above chapter 3, verse 1? You can see one in the middle of the page, and then you can also see them on that side. That was me. I actually took a pen and I went through this entire thing and I scribbled out all of the headings because they just bugged me so much because I just wanted a pure text. Now, something else that you actually might find interesting about this, this is rather nostalgic for me, and I'll see how close I can bring this. I'm not sure if you'll be able to read it. But some of my first contact with the Hebrew language personally came in my teens through the Hebrew names in the, um, in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. I was very interested in uh, in-depth Bible study and understanding the Word of God better. And uh, and so for me, that started with looking up the meanings of Hebrew names because I knew that they were meaningful. So you can see here it says Moses to draw. That was written by baby Izzy probably 20 years ago. No, over 20 years ago. And then, of course, you can actually see I scribbled out some of the notes on the bottom there too, apparently. I just didn't like all those traditions of men. Okay, let's see if I can get this to focus back on my face. I'm over here. I'm over here. Hey, all right. So now if you're the way I was in my teens, then you might not want those headers in eSword. Perhaps you regard them to be blasphemous, adding to the very word of God. Okay, I'm joking about that. But here's how to turn them off. Go to options like this. Go down to display Bible periscope and click and watch them magically disappear. Boom. All right. So now you have a purer text. For those of us who want that, and uh, that is my that is my uh, third tip for you. And actually, you know, I, I mentioned I mentioned what I did in my teens with scribbling out all those headings. Um, since then, uh, you know, just really getting into the uh, the Hebrew texts of the Word of God, and actually not just the um, not just the Old Testament, also, but 
I've read quite a few different translations of the New Testament into biblical style Hebrew and also into modern Hebrew. And I've also read a translation of the Peshitta Aramaic New Testament into uh, modern Hebrew. But um, as, and, and my reason, my reason for that really is because I love Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, and I, uh, my life has been a lifelong pursuit of um, wanting to come closer to Him, and and know Him uh, more deeply, and and find Him in uh, the, the His original context, you know, which of course was um, the uh, the Jewish world of the Second Temple era. Um, you know, Jesus was the Jewish rabbi who practiced biblical Judaism and uh, who read the Hebrew Bible and who prayed the old the old, the old traditional prayers, which are still prayed in synagogues today. So, for part of me, part of part of that was um, delving into the original Hebrew texts of the Bible. And uh, something that my soul was really quite delighted to discover is that in the original Hebrew text of the Bible, you don't get all of that extra stuff. You just get the straight text of Scripture. And actually, it's kind of neat that I just happened to open to this page. I'm going to show you a really nifty thing. This is Exodus chapter 15. It's the Song of the Sea. And you can see in most of the most of the Hebrew Bible, it's all laid out in just big blocks of text. But the Song of the Sea is laid out like this to picture the waters on either side and the Israelites piling through the Red Sea in the middle. So maybe you can see that for yourself. Really nifty. I actually... Um, I actually just pointed that out to my daughter at synagogue the other day as we were uh, praying through the singing, actually, through this text. So if you're a purist like me, then uh, you may want to you may want to come and learn how to read the original Hebrew text of the Bible with me at holylanguage.com. And uh, then you'll just finally find relief for your for your soul. All right. So I'm going to show you another feature here. You'll notice these little scrolls on the right-hand side. These are bookmarks. I'm going to show you how to use the bookmark feature if you want to use it in a later tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to turn it off because, again, it's just it's an additional feature, and if you don't use it, then it's annoying. Or maybe it looks cool to you. I don't know. If you like the looks of little scrolls with, with numbers on them, then great. Keep it. But here's how to turn it off. You just go down here to Display, Bookmark, Navigator, and click that, and boom. It is gone. So that's my fourth tip for you. All right, let's talk now about how to change the font size and uh, color and type in eSword. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go to Options. And you'll see here how it says Fonts. So click on that. And you will get an option for fonts and uh, you can change the different sizes and whatnot. Okay. By the way, you might notice that the interface for this is really quite uh, simple. That's intentional. I run Windows 7 and I actually use a very basic uh, layout because it makes my computer faster and I have a need for speed because I do a lot of work on my computer. Also, I'm a minimalist, so I really like a simple interface. Um, but it, it doesn't always have to be this simple. It just depends on which version of Windows you're using in the layout. Right? So don't get scared off. This is just how I have it because I want it this way. All right, the default font is Verdana. I personally like Georgia. So let's just click this open. Basically, you can use any font on here that you have loaded on your computer. I like Georgia because it's just a, kind of an old-fashioned looking script. Um, you, could, you could leave the font size at 12. I personally change it to 11. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just change it here so you can see what that would look like. Okay. Um, now, Let's uh, let's go ahead and see what that looks like, and then we're gonna then I'll I'll show you the uh, the second half of this when it comes to the uh, the tool tip, so to speak. So we'll give this a moment, and it will change. And uh, that's that's generally how I like it. That might be a little small for you personally, but uh, I like being able to see a nice sized chunk of text. It means I don't have to spend as much time navigating around. Especially if I'm just, you know, going to look for a specific verse and then copy it or whatever. Okay. Now we're gonna hear we're gonna click KJV plus here. As you can see, it says that it's the King James version with strong numbers. So this is this is a very powerful feature of eSword that I'm gonna show you how to use in depth in a later tutorial. For now, I'm just gonna show you that when we mouse over it, it gives you this uh, this box. And you can see here that the box has a specific color. And there's a specific font that's used on the inside with a specific size. And uh, that is what I'm going to show you how to change next. All right. So I'll go back to Options. 
we're gonna go to um, you know what um, yeah let's go to fonts and then I'll, we'll also show you text colors in just a moment here okay so tooltip font size let's let's make that a little bit smaller in fact let's make it let's bring it down to eight just to make it really quite marked and then here we have the editor font size. I don't use the editor, like I said, but you can change that to whatever you jolly well please. There are also Greek, Hebrew, and Latin fonts. Right now the Hebrew font that's loaded is Ezra. That's a decent one. Another one I like is the David font. You would have to download that and install it on your computer for yourself. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll click OK here again. And then I will show you how this changes. And OK, there we go. All right, so you can see how the font is considerably smaller now. So you may like that, especially if it's a big box, it may actually extend below the bottom of your screen. So that can be that can be handy when you uh, when you make it a little bit smaller. All right, let's go back up here to options and I'm going to show you text colors now. All right, so here are the text colors you can as you can see you can make the make the text you can include the red letter text to uh, you know, turn the words of Christ red or not, it's all up to you. Um, we also have the ba background and then the pop-up um, colors, man, I'm having a hard time actually seeing the difference between these, but I'm pretty sure that this would be the white one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that background color. We're just going to leave that white, but you might want to actually change it to a different color. Maybe you like a papyrus color or something like that. Who knows? Oh, it's not responding. You know, there's some kind of background program running on my computer right now. And uh, it's, it's actually slowing it down considerably. I don't know what that is. We might have to look into that. Anyways, so there you go. So now this is this is personally this is how I like to read eSword. Um, just straight black text. Um, when you you know you bring up these little little um, what does it call it here? The Strong's number tool tips. You bring up the Strong's number tool tips, and uh, and as you can see here, you can turn those on and off. So let, let's just see how that works real quick too. Okay. So let's say you're mousing over the text, and then it's bringing up all of these. If you go up here and you turn that off, then you're mousing over it and you're like, where did you go? Why aren't you revealing yourself to me anymore? Well, it's because you turned it off. So just turn it back on. Display Strong's number tool tips. Okay, okay, there, it's back. Okay, there, so that's that was a relief. That was close, wasn't it? Okay, so that's the fifth tip I have for you. Just in terms of, so as you can see already, you know, originally when you open eSword, it's like there are four boxes. It's the font is really big. It might not be the most friendly thing, and you may be wondering how do I change all this. That can be uh, a little bit formidable. So now you know how to get a nice, nice layout in eSword. Um, you have all of your, you know, you have all of your your windows are over here on the side. You have a nice, uh, nice text. You know, you don't have as much clutter. If you're a minimalist, I'm sure that causes great delight to thy soul. All right, let's continue here. Um, now, right now, there are only a couple of tabs here, but as you load more Bible translations, it's, it's gonna, it can actually fill up the whole tab area, especially, for instance, if you have your, your Bible window just filling up half of your screen. So I'm going to show you, um, and, and basically, they're just going to start piling up. So you can end up with three or four lines of tabs, which can be rather overwhelming. Um, clearly, right now, that's not the issue, not the problem. But I'm going to show you how to how to deal with that. Okay, so you go back to options again, and you're going to go to resource. And here in resource, at the very bottom, it says display tabs in a single row. So if you click on that, and then click OK, instead of piling up a whole bunch of tabs in a row like this, it's going to um, have mercy on your soul, and it's going to um, it's going to just show one row with a little arrow there. And then if you click on the arrow, it will show you another round of those. So that is my sixth tip for you. Now, we're going to go back there um, to that particular box. And I'm going to, the next, the next tips I have for you are, they're more technical. Um, they may be a little over your head depending on you know what you what you want to use eSword for in terms of some of the background stuff. I mentioned how I hacked the um, the tip file already and I replaced it with my own tip. Um, so you know th those are, these are the kinds of things I'm going to share with you now. 
Um, and I don't want you to go anywhere though, because if you don't want to, if you don't find that interesting, you are going to find the video that I'm about to play for you on the side interesting. Um, I have a sense of humor. And so I'm going to talk on a very serious level with you for a moment, but I do want you to recognize that I'm saying this with humor. So of course, it's very important that we be biblical people. We want to be the people of the book. And of course, we want all of our practices to be based on scripture. And if it's not in the word of God, then maybe it's a tradition of men and we should just discard it. So I personally find it really quite disturbing. The, uh, the, interest, the interest amongst believers today in cats, it's, it, it's really really has taken over Christian circles. Um, cat memes, videos of cats on YouTube, even people who have their very own pet cats. I personally don't, don't see cats in the Word of God. Um, if you look it up in the concordance, not once are cats mentioned in the Word of God and certainly not as domesticated creatures to be had within the house. Now, what I can say is that we do have a deep and innate need for pets to have little animals running around our house that we can look at and talk to, even though they don't understand us, and feed and take care of and play with and be entertained by. So I would like to suggest that we start a movement towards more biblical pets, and I would like to suggest the hedgehog, quite personally. The hedgehog is mentioned in scripture, and the Hebrew word for hedgehog is kipod. So, while we talk about some technical stuff, I'm actually going to play a video for you on the side of um, hedgehogs running around. Because they're really cute, actually. I like hedgehogs. I wouldn't mind having a pet hedgehog someday. And it's kind of nice that they actually have, like, there's a Hebrew word for hedgehogs and uh, that they're biblical. Um, I, I will mention that cats are mentioned in extra biblical Jewish texts, uh, like the Mishnah, for instance. There is a Hebrew word for cat. It's chatul. I know, it's that, that horking sound, and uh, that actually makes so much sense because that's what cats do. Chatul. <laughs> like, it just makes sense. So anyways, that's the Hebrew word for cat, chatul. Kind of interesting, actually, because if you, like, make a kind of a harder sound, instead of the ha sound, you say ka, then it's katul, which sounds a lot like cat. You know, ka, cat, katul. Mm, interesting. But cats aren't in the Bible. They're in extra biblical literature. So if you have a cat, that is an extra biblical pet. So just so you are aware of that, you and your traditions of men. Okay, I'm totally kidding, right? Um, so anyways, here is a little video that I'm going to have on the side for you. This is from Taylor, what's her name? Taylor Nicole Dean, arguably the, uh, the YouTube queen of pets. And um, I had to turn off the sound because otherwise it would be too distracting for you while I'm trying to talk to you. Um, but you can basically, this is a video of her chasing her little hedgehog, her blind little old hedgehog around the house in the middle of the night and talking to him about all kinds of things. And his name is Kovu, by the way. Kovu the hedgehog, all right? So while I talk to you about some technical details of Esort, I'm also going to play this video of Kovu, the Kipode hedgehog for you, and um, hopefully that'll, that'll keep you entertained. All right, so there's Kovu, and um, maybe we should just both watch for a moment. Oh, it looked like he was a sock. He's not, he's a hedgehog. Looking at fish in the aquarium in the middle of the night, Kovu is very mis mischievous. He, he chews on everything. He bites things and he tries to eat things that he shouldn't eat. So if you watch Kovu in this, in this video, you'll definitely see him constantly trying to eat everything. All right. And that's all I'm going to say about Kovu. So let's get back to eSword here for those of us who want to. We're going to go here to options again. I'm going to go to resource. I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to show you another feature here. Now you can see here resources, location, and user files location. Now, the default for the resources location is gonna be in your program files. So, you know, your C drive, then you're gonna have program files. Um, the, the times 86 there means that I'm on a, uh, I think it's a 64 bit computer if I'm not mistaken. Um, generally, you'll also have a regular program files and then eSword, right? Now, user files location, this bugs me so much. This is one of my own personal pet peeves, um, it automatically creates a folder in your documents folder. 
an eSword folder. And, and I mean, if, if you have a whole bunch of folders in your documents folder, that might not bug you. But I personally, oh, isn't that cute? She's like having a little tug of war with Kovu. I just love that. All right. Anyways, but it might if it, it, I personally don't like how um, programs automatically create folders in my documents folder because I'm a minimalist and I maybe I'm just controlling. So you can actually change the um, these locations. You can change the user files location to make it the same place as the resources location. So basically everything just goes right into, you know, your eSword fo folder in program files. So I'm not going to show you how to do that here. I'm just going to show you that it is available and you can do that. And in fact, you know, I have a clean install here, but I, in, in real life, in my own version. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. I just love Kovu so much. All right. Anyways, in my own version, everything does go into my program files and you can like resources here. That's like, you know, versions, commentaries, whatever. You can change where that goes too. I mean, you could change that and put it in your documents if you want it. It's totally up to you. Right. But anyways, that's just a handy little feature. And I wanted to share that with you as tip seven. Now I'm going to show you tip number eight here. So we're going to click. Okay. We're going to get rid of this. It looks like Taylor is now preparing Kovu's food up here in the left hand top left corner. Thank you um, for preparing those little notes so that we have some idea of what's going on. All right, so let's say that you just totally messed up the layout of eSword and you're like, ah, oh, I hate this. It's just this big awful disaster. Like, let's say that you accidentally clicked on Auto High Bible Books. Now there's just nothing. You just wrecked it. You open eSword and you can't even see anything for crying out loud. And you're just totally lost and you don't know what to do. I'm going to show you your last ditch emergency, uh, your emergency measure here. Okay. You're going to go up here to help. And this is, this is how you're going to get your help. Oh, tip of the day. That's kind of cute. Um, it's right here. Reset eSword settings. Okay, this is a last ditch effort. It is going to reset everything on eSword. So you're going to click this. You're going to get the warning that it is indeed about to reset everything. And you're going to say, oh, yes, I'm in a crazy mood. All right. It's going to stop and it's going to bring it back up next time with all new settings. So let's go ahead here and let's um, bring eSword back up. So I just hit Control Alt S which has my little shortcuts so that I'm able to bring this back up. And lo and behold, it's loading right now. And we're going to, it's going to load back up in its pure form. I wonder what it's going to do about tips, if it's going to load the old tips, the original tips, or if it's just going to load the tip that I had. Anyways, that will be fun to see. So, um, while that's loading, I'm going to move on to uh, tip nine. This is this is even more advanced. This is actually stuff about where eSword saves the settings because some of them are actually saved in the registry. So let's see here. You know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn off Kovu now. The video is pretty much over. So I, I hope, really hope that you enjoyed that. And um, let's go ahead here and. Uh, close this tab all together and here comes eSword for you all right so here's eSword in its perfectly pristine state <laughs> apparently it still did pull from the, the hacked tip file that I created that's hilarious okay all right so this is eSword again and it's in you know its original state and now you know how to how to tweak all that stuff um, what do you think of my desktop, by the way? I'm from Saskatchewan, Canada, so I, I have a, a love-hate relationship with snow. I thought that was really quite beautiful. All right, now I'm going to show you uh, just just something in the registry here. If you ever... Uh, eSword doesn't save all of the settings um, in the documents folder. Some of them are actually in the registry, so you may actually want to access that. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, so... I'm sorry that you can't watch Kovu while this is happening, but don't worry, this won't take long. Okay, so um, this is this is what the what eSword is going to look like on this side. I'm just going to show you on this side. Oops, sorry. This is what eSword is going to look like in your um, in your program files folder. This is like a fresh install. There are certain there are certain Bible versions and commentaries and whatnot that are required. And uh, this tip file here, by the way, is the one that I I changed. 
right? So that's that's what that's going to look like there. Now, um, if you, I don't know if you know how to bring up a registry editor on your computer. You may not want to do this. Kids, don't try this at home. But if you know what you're doing, you, you know you might find this handy actually. Um, so the way where you're going you're gonna to do this is um, you're going to you know go up go down to your start button. You're going to bring that up, and then you're going to type in reg edit. Um, reg edit and that's going to bring up your registry editor now if you want to find the eSword settings this is where they are um, at the beginning all these are going to be closed right they're going to be closed and it's going to look like that so then you're going to go H key current user um, you're going to go down to software which will be closed you're going to open up software and then under software this is hard to find I had to do some digging for this let me tell you you're going to go down to VB and VBA set program settings right and under there, you're going to find eSword. That is the folder you want right there, right? So if you, uh, let's say that you like your settings in eSword, but you also want to reset it, you can actually open open up, you can find the settings in Registry Editor, you're going to right click, and then you're going to export them like that. And you can save them to your desktop. So that's basically what I've done. So um, I'm going to show you the settings that I personally have set up for eSword. Um, you know, because basically I had to save all my original settings for the way I actually use it and uh, put those away so that I could create a fresh install so that I could show you how to get it set up. So now I'm going to show you my own personal version of eSword and what it looks like. Okay, so this is the way it comes with a fresh install. Um, we're now going to we're going to do two things here. Um, so firstly, let's go ahead and we're going to go to the uh, program files. And as you can see, this is the fresh install version. And that's what it was pulling from. The default is just you know the regular eSword. So we're going to say fresh install and uh, give that administrative per permission. Great. Then we're going to go here, eSword mine. This is my own personal version. We're going to change that name back to eSword. And now that's the folder that it's going to be drawing from. And I'll just show you real quickly what that looks, what that folder looks like, and what's inside of it. So this is a as you can see, it's a much fuller, it's a much fuller install. Um, it has a ton of different Bibles, uh, resources like the nice, uh, you know, the, the Nicene and Antonicene Church Fathers, um, uh, Justinius's Hebrew Grammar, lots of wonderful goodies. And uh, I had mentioned that if you download the zipped folder that I've prepared for you, <laughs> that has like a biblical resonance to it. Um, from the link underneath this video that you can get all of those goodies, right? So anyways, so that's that's what this looks like, all right? So this is the folder that eSword is gonna be drawing from when we reopen it. Let's go ahead now, and I am going to, oops, excuse me. We're going to actually reinstall the original settings in the registry. So you can see here that I, I, um, I outputted, or exported, we should say, um, what the settings look like with a fresh install, and then my own version of eSword. So let's click on that, and uh, we're going to allow it to change the registry. Again, this does give you a warning because if you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess up your computer tinkering around with the registry. Okay, so we have gone ahead and we have we have um, put it back to the way eSword is when I. Uh, how I use it. So let's go ahead and we'll open eSword again and we'll see if this doesn't work for us. eSword, the sword of the Lord with an electronic edge. I love that. That's a great phrase. And uh, this is the tenth tip, by the way, just like if you want to, you know, save settings and then uh, that's the ninth one and then re restore settings. And uh, there you go. So. Let's close that up because as you know I don't use it all right and so basically this is the way my version of eSword looks and uh, let's uh, let's say let's open up the uh, new American Standard version so there you have it um, now as you can see I actually I like all of my openable tabs to be on the right hand side because if I'm over here I might be clicking through verses and I just uh, my arrow likes to fly around and then it bonks into the side and then it randomly opens up something like the dictionary and you're like stop stop so that's basically how I solved that problem so that is the first of our five eSword tutorials I hope that this has been a useful little tutorial for you 
I hope that it's definitely got you thinking about the, 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 the biblicality of cats versus hedgehogs. Hopefully this will start a real revolution. And uh, I hope you'll consider getting a pet hedgehog. If you do, I definitely want to know about it. And yes, you do have my permission to name your pet hedgehog Izzy. Because Izzy is short for Israel, and that's a biblical name. And it just makes sense that Bible pets should have Bible names, don't you think? <laughs> okay. In our next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to navigate around eSword um, and use it to navigate around the Bible. Um, go to specific chapter and verse. There's some there are some quick ways to do that. Bookmark passages, search for specific words or phrases, and then copy stuff. So thanks for joining me and this tutorial. As I said, I'm a Hebrew teacher. And just to prove it to you, I have a Hebrew letters coffee cup, and I actually know what all these letters are. Even if you cover up the like the little name, I can still tell you that that is the letter Mem. And uh, I can tell you these things. So come see me at holylanguage.com. If you'd like to learn more about the original Hebrew, context, Hebrew Jewish context of the Bible, come a little closer to Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, um, by, by learning about you know, the Bible that he read and uh, learning about the, uh, the kind of Judaism that he practiced. Um, I would love to have you uh, come and check us out and you know, um, possibly even become a member of our community and learn with us. So hopefully I'll see you around at holylanguage.com and hopefully I will also see you soon in our next tutorial. Shalom.